what's going on? Eric Bach here with Bach Performance, and today I'm going to take you step by step from warm up to finisher all the way through leg day. And so, as you're checking this out, make sure that you hit subscribe on the channel and drop any questions or comments that you have as we go through because I'm going to break down each and every single thing that we do in this workout with important cues that you can take and you can implement in your own training to look great naked without living in the gym. Let's go. Before you go any further, it's 100% crucial that you watch the rest of this video and hit subscribe now. Okay, so first and foremost, what we want to do is we want to increase core body temperature and start getting the blood flowing, especially to our lower body. So what I like to do, kick it off very simply, jump rope, three to five minutes, simple skips, just get the blood flowing. The big benefit here as well is you can build timing and coordination. So if you want to be strong, if you want to be lean, but also athletic, these are absolutely crucial qualities that you need to develop. Plus, got tiny ass calves, it's not gonna hurt either. Next up, I'm gonna take you through a very simple warm up series that I learned years ago called the Quadruped Hip Series. What this is gonna do, it's gonna help us activate tissues in our core, in our trunk, that helps stabilize your spine, prevent injuries, and also activate muscles directly within our hips. So we're talking about gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. Many people suffer from back injuries and dysfunction because their lower back or lack of stability is taking over movements that are actually meant to be for their glutes. So pay particular attention to my body position here. The first exercise we're gonna focus on is called the quadruped hip circle. It sounds very simple, but there's a lot going on here. I'm gonna push my hands directly into the ground, stabilize my trunk all the way through the movement, keep all of the range of motion coming directly through my hip. As you'll see, I'm in a joint stack position, meaning my wrist, arm, and shoulder are all gonna be over the top of each other versus out in front or behind my body. Same thing with my hips and with my knees, and this is crucial to be in that joint stack position so we can optimally activate the tissues that we want. The second exercise is a quadruped bent knee extension. We do this to activate your gluteus maximus. That's a big old butt muscle. What we're gonna do here, we want all the range of motion coming directly through your hip without compensating through arching your lower back. When we do this, we can activate the glutes. Then the third exercise we call the lateral reach. The lateral reach is gonna activate both the gluteus maximus with the straight run leech, reach to the outside, and then the external rotation, we're also gonna hit gluteus medius. And when we activate the muscles of the glutes and stabilize the core, that is how we turn the lights on to be able to generate force and do so in a safe manner for the rest of the workout. Okay, my joints are stacked, locked in, hip circle. ditch a shirt because, no, I'm not just bougie like that, I'm actually blending in with the wall way too much for you to see what I was doing on those previous exercises. So, the next two exercises that we're going to focus on here, toe grab, sumo squat, or sumo squat with the toe grab. This is going to be done to activate and warm up my glutes, groin, hamstrings, quads, and start to groove that squat mechanic. And the second exercise is going to be a lateral squat. We want to incorporate frontal plane movement. It's going to be a different way to move our body and activate dormant tissues to make sure that we are optimally prepped and warmed up for the best workout possible. Here they are. So on the sumo squat with a toe grab, a couple different things. Number one, you can go a little bit wider with your stance, and doing so is going to allow you to train your hips and your glutes a little bit more. If you're a wide stance squatter, that's going to be beneficial. If you struggle with ankle dorsiflexion, with the angle on your squat, you can actually go more narrow with the stance and we can improve that active range of motion, which is going to lead to better depth on your squat. Now the second exercise, lateral squat. So a double wide position here, then simply dropping down, right back up. Notice you want to keep the, your foot flat that you're leaning away from, that you're leaning into, so we don't shift weight. If your foot comes directly off the ground while you do this movement, you can put a lot more stress actually directly on your knees and loose stability. Five, your side. The next exercise we're gonna add in is a single leg 
kettlebell Romanian deadlift. We like to incorporate a single leg movement before we jump into some of our heavy compound exercises because we can activate dormant tissues. You see, when we're only using heavy bilateral lifts like a squat, like a deadlift, what can happen? We develop compensation patterns that can prevent us from not only performing our best, but also lead to injuries and inadequate muscular development. So what we're gonna do directly, we are going to do three sets of six to eight. Each set is gonna get a little bit heavier. We're gonna start at 45 pounds for that first set. Next set, we're gonna wrap it up directly over to 60 pounds. Then the final set, we're gonna take on the 80 pound kettlebell. Again, the goal here is gonna be control all the way through. Now, one important note, if you're doing a single leg exercise and you start to lose your balance a little bit, don't try to save it with your foot isolated directly into the ground. If you do that, mm, bad news. If you twist with weight, with the foot locked in the ground, that's how injuries can happen. So just put the other foot down, regain your stability, then jump right back into this set. Okay, so one really important thing to do when you're doing a single leg RDL, your focus has to be on your hip hinge pattern, right? So right here, and we have a very light bend in the knee of the leg that's working, and all the movement takes place by pushing your hips back, right? It's not reaching down. If you reach down, what happens is you tend to go into spinal flexion, which then puts your back at more of a risk of an injury. This one's doing a crossover right here. Anyway, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna focus on a hip hinge pattern, slow and control, Three to four seconds down, and that's how we're gonna knock out these RDLs. So one specific thing you'll see me doing directly on these sets, my non-working hand, I'm gonna create a fist. That additional irradiation is going to help create more tension that actually activates all the way through the lat and through the core to help stabilize your spine. That's going to help you have more control when you're doing a single leg RDL. All right, single leg RDL, those are done. Now what we're going to do, I just popped on some knee sleeves from Iron Bowl. These definitely help in terms of joint stress, joint lubrication. And now we're going to jump over and actually do squat jumps, three sets of five. The reason we're doing this, we want to maximize type two muscle fiber engagement. Type 2 muscle fibers are the ones that are going to be most important for being strong, lean, and explosive. And after 30, we actually start to lose some of those fast twitch muscle fibers. So if you want to build a body that's both physically capable and it looks great naked, we have to incorporate some explosive movement directly into the workout itself. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to focus on maximum explosive intent versus going through the jumps as fast as possible. Meaning, we go down, jump explosively up, reset, and go again. Again, three sets of five here. After this, we're gonna jump directly into a squat. Now, I don't always do a single leg RDL before I do a jump, but typically, my knees feel a little bit better once I start getting a good pump directly inside of my hamstring. So, once we do that, cool. Now we get an explosive exercise before we move on to our front squat, which will be the biggest compound exercise that we're gonna have, then that'll be five sets of five with increasing loading on each set. If you want to lose fat and build muscle, the number one thing you need to do, join our Look Great Naked protocol. Head to the link below, book your transformation call, and hit subscribe. So what we're going to have next is we're going to have a barbell front squat. A couple important things. A barbell front squat, great exercise. It's going to be actually a little bit better directly for quad development and easier on your spine because the load is going to be a lot more vertical, meaning your chest stays up, and we can take more spinal compression stress and we can shear stress when your torso is more inclined on a barbell back squat. But a couple big things. When you're doing a front squat, you gotta think about keeping your elbows as high as you can. When your elbows drop, the bar drops, that is when you bail and when you lose it. For that same reason, your rhomboids, your upper back, are actually a limiting factor for many people in a front squat. And given most people have piss poor posture, what you wanna be able to do is understand that when you do a front squat, we generally have to program reps a little bit lighter in order to make sure that the rhomboids aren't the first thing to go so we can adequately train your quads. Now, an important point, the thing I wanna point out directly with this barbell is this. Look at the height. When you set up for a squat, you want to be basically between shoulder height and nipple height. A lot of people put a bar way too high and then when they go back to rack it, they have to go up on one side, up on the other, and it's just not pretty. So we wanna start right there. Now we're gonna do five sets of five. I'm actually gonna hit two wrap up sets just a little bit lighter on 135 and 155 before we take it up. 
Next set up, 165 again for five. Now, one reason we like to increase the weight as we go, we gradually ramp up our central nervous system while our body continues to get ready for optimal performance. Most times when you see five by five in a workout, it's not five sets straight across. You are ramping up, hitting one or two really top end sets, and then you're game over. Once you get sufficiently strong, you're not gonna be able to say front squat 275 for five sets of five. You're gonna be smoked after one or two of those. So that's how we're gonna load this each and every single set. Smoked after the last one. We're gonna call it after that set of front squats, call them one early. Sometimes it'll happen. Still pleased with the work that we did at 275 for five. So now we're gonna move on to the next exercise. Next core exercise we're gonna hit, we're gonna work that hip hinge pattern with a barbell Romanian deadlift. Primary reason here, hey, we wanna be able to focus, get some plenty of good work on the glutes and on the hamstrings here. We're gonna increase the reps a little bit because at this point, some neurological fatigue has set in with the heavier loading and the explosive work. So now we're gonna hit three sets of eight to 10 on a barbell Romanian deadlift. Again, I like to do a warm up set or two, that's my personal preference. And then we go into our work sets where we increase the loading on each and every single set. One of the most important things when you have a barbell Romanian deadlift, all the movement needs to come directly through that hip hinge pattern. One big mistake I see people make is they start squatting the weight up. So here, knees are slightly unlocked, and then it's ass back. Right? Hips on or knees unlocked, ass back. I'm gonna maximize that length tension relationship in the hamstrings, and that's what makes a barbell Romanian deadlift such a great muscle building exercise. Right, so we've got one more set on the barbell Romanian deadlifts. Fatigue is definitely starting to set in. Specifically, you can definitely tell core smoked after those front squats in that previous set on the barbell Romanian deadlift. So now I've got Old Faithful, got the old Bach belt. Right here, we're gonna hit one more set. Open for eight, I'll be happy with six, I'll be thrilled with 10. That's our plus two minus principle, plus two minus two principle that you may have read about so far. All right, so we're gonna hit this set and on to the next one. Second to last exercise today, we're gonna be on the Titan leg extension. Leg extension, as you likely know, incredible for quad development. This machine is really crucial, you gotta be smooth out of that transition on the bottom of the movement to reduce stress directly on the joint. And like any other isolation exercise, the focus here needs to be on the quality of the contraction on each rep. Now, when you're setting up, we also have to make sure that the knee joint is directly in line with that pivot point in the leg extension to optimize biomechanics and reduce joint stress. We're gonna do three sets of 12 to 15 reps, the 45 to 60 second rest to build that metabolic stress directly in the tissue to trigger growth. Now one important note whenever you're doing a leg extension is crucial to really anchor yourself and set yourself into that seat as much as possible and try not to lean forward. Doing so can actually take the stretch off of your quads enough to where it limits your ability to build lean muscle. Oh, here we go. It is time for the finisher. This is going to absolutely decimate your quads. You're going to want to start conservative on this one. So here's what we're going to do. We're doing a Bulgarian split squat, the nasty little twist. We're going to start with a moderately heavy load, a weight that you can probably do for 10 to 12 reps. But what we're gonna do, we're only gonna hold one weight and it's gonna be on the same side of the working leg. What this is gonna do, it's gonna force a harder contraction in your glute to also stabilize the load on the Bulgarian split squat. You're gonna drop down, you're gonna hit the bottom piece or the bottom portion of your rep and you're gonna do an isometric hold. So you're just gonna hold position while keeping tension directly on your legs for 10 to 15 seconds. Now, after that isometric hold, then you're gonna do six to eight reps. As soon as you're done with that, set the weight down and we're dropping. Repeat, drop, repeat, drop, repeat, drop. The way I'm gonna do this is gonna be 60 pounds, 45 pounds, 35 pounds, 15 pounds. I'll do one leg rest and then I will hit the other one. You only need to do this one time but it's absolutely going to crush your legs. So hope you had a great time testing this workout out. If you do have any questions specifically, number one, hit subscribe button. Number two, drop them in the comments below. This is just a small sample of what we do. Obviously, if I'm working with you individually, the workout's gonna be tailored specifically to what you need to accomplish 
in order to look great naked without living in the gym. But before you go, drop a comment, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you next time. Did you find this helpful? If so, pound that like button and hit subscribe. Now, if you want a free copy of our chiseled muscle cheat sheet, the no BS way to help you lose body fat and build lean muscle in 90 days, make sure that you go to the description below and download your free copy. Any questions, drop them in the comments, and can't wait to see you with the next video.